have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. The society yeah. and community around us as role models and examples and decision making and the things that we do they go and shop on the sabbath day you shop on the sabbath day okay you think ain't nothing wrong with it because they store is open something is wrong with it the most i said not to do it that's what's wrong with it psalms 147 and 19 he showeth his word unto jacob his statutes and his judgments unto israel he hath not dealt so with any nation. So if he have not dealt so with any nation, that shows you they don't have the true understanding of how to live. You got the true understanding of how to live, read. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. And as for the judgment of the Lord, meaning to discern what's right and what's wrong, they, not, they don't know that, okay? They don't know that, okay? Go back to where you at. This is Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, in the way of sinners. So the Lord said, if you do, if you don't walk in the counsel of these ungodly people, who oppressed you, man? Okay? who murder you in the street, who raped and robbed your forefathers. If you don't follow their example in life, the Lord said he gonna bless you. One of them we went into was the Sabbath day. But if you go against the Lord our power, what's gonna end up happening? The most I say, he gonna scorn you to death. Let's finish reading Psalms 1. Verse two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. What law do we bring up? About the Sabbath. And that, and you should not be buying and selling on the Sabbath day. Today is the Lord's Sabbath day. That's the day that you're supposed to rest. And our people, man, uh, in a, they, you live in a perpetual, uh, uh, never-ending state. That's why you got to repent. Can you get Psalms? Not Psalms. Uh, Acts. Uh. <laughs> That's why you got to repent, so that the Most High would do away with the sins. Okay? He'll forgive you for your sins if you repent. What is it, repentance? Repentance is acknowledging that you've been breaking the most high's laws and that the life that you live was contrary to the Bible and that you was walking away from the most high. All right? Read. This is Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Yo, brother, it's okay. Come on through. Let me ask you a question. Listen to this. Read. Acts 3, verse 19, uh -huh. repent ye therefore and be converted. The Lord said repent. So when you actually repent, when you acknowledge your fault, the scriptures say something is going, to, something needs to happen, then you need to be converted. You need to change. That's how you repent. Okay, sister, have you ever repented? You ever repented of something? According to the according to scripture, yeah, you. You ever, yeah, they talking to you. Have you ever repented according to the scriptures? Huh? We say we're still in America. If, if we were saved, we wouldn't be here in America. Okay? Yeah, so if, if we were saved, we wouldn't be here in America. Okay? First of all, we have to repent. And we're going to show you that we will have to repent. And then as a nation, we got to change. As a nation, I don't see change. I see everybody out here buying and selling on the Sabbath and walking past the servants of God. The servants of God is bringing our laws, telling you what to do, what not to do. Nobody's coming up here asking questions. But I bet if we was playing uh, R&B music and giving us uh, free CDs and hot dogs, it wouldn't, it, it, it wouldn't even be no standing room. So Israel have not repented, neither have you acknowledged your sins and your faults. Okay, read. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. The whole purpose is for your sins to be blotted out. That's the whole purpose, man, for your sins to be blotted out. If you get your sins blotted out, then that means the Lord is going to forgive you, man. Okay? And if the Most High forgive you, then you know what? Get, um, what is that? 5 11 okay no 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 Romans 5 and 11 
Christ, then you can then you can clearly say that Christ died for you. Okay? Is it Romans 5 and 11? Huh? So, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rome, Romans 5 and 11. Then you will clearly be able to feel that Christ died for your sins and you will and, and, and you will be confident in saying it. This is Romans chapter 5, verse 11. And not only so, but we also join in God through... Read it, start at verse 10. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Right, for if when we were enemies. When is Israel enemies? Israel is enemies, man, when you sin against, this, when you sin against God by breaking his laws. So all of our people that's living in sin and you breaking God's laws, you can't be saying that ain't nobody perfect. You get that, Matthew 5, 48. You, you, you can't be saying that ain't nobody perfect because the warning is in the scriptures to be perfect. So all of our people that's, homo, that's being a homosexual, that's being lesbian, that's stealing, that's lying, that's fornicating, having unlawful sex, okay? Giving and divorce, divorcing, all different type of wickedness and madness, defying your temple by smoking and drugs and smoking cigarettes and smoking e-cigarettes and smoking blunts and smoking black and miles. You understand? Trying to be the player. All of our people that's breaking God's laws, you have made yourself an enemy. Because what did the Christ say? Read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect. See that? Be ye therefore perfect. Christ said, be perfect. Now I get Mark 14 and 1. Christ said, be therefore perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Okay, you got it? Mark chapter 14 and verse 1. After two days. Uh, believe in God. St. John 14 and 1. St. John chapter 14 and verse 1. John chapter 14 verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. You see that? So Christ said, if you believe in the Most High, then you need to believe in his writings. Believe in him. And he told us that we can be perfect. Be ye perfect. How do you be perfect? Get Psalms, what's that? 17 and 9, 9 and 17. Yeah, how do you be perfect? You can be perfect. What's up, brother? Come here, man. Did you know you could be perfect, God? Brother, I mean, really brother. Not on my own. Yes, but you know what? You can be perfect by having uh, friends that are perfected the things that are right. How y'all doing? Did you know you could be perfect, brother? Come on around here. Let me show you one precept. That's right. Shallow one, brother. Come on, sis. Come on around here. Let us. Let us. Drop this out. Listen to this. Read. Psalms 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. See that? The law of the Lord is perfect. So when you learn these laws, the Christ said, be ye therefore perfect. You can't be perfect. Stop letting people tell you, ain't nobody perfect. That's a person full of excuses. That's somebody that don't want to do right. But every day you apply the laws to the best of your ability, God going to justify you. Did you know that? He will justify you, man. You will find favor in his sight. And when you find favor in his sight, you will also have success in his sight too. He'll open doors that people can't close. He'll close doors that people can't open back up. You know what I'm saying? They want to hurt you, they can't hurt you. If he is for you, nobody can ever be against you. You can win, man. The only way, but what we have to do, Man, we got to deal with these laws. We got to trust in the Christ of Nazareth, whom the Most High sent to us that didn't do his own will, but did the will of the Father, leaving us an example for us to follow. But you can't do it without the friendship. I need you to get that in 1 John 1. Read. For the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Converting the soul. Why do you want to, why do you want to be changed? You got to change. Okay, you got to change so that the society around us don't black man us up, man. It don't gobble us up. Just like y'all seen Birth of a Nation, Birth of a New Nation, you're going to see it. Okay, man, well, the dance of Sabbath day. You know you're from the tribe of Judah. You should be resting, but that's another thing right there. Okay, so that's how, so you got to be strong. We, most I will. We might go tomorrow afternoon. See the Sabbath be gone. We within the law. Things like that. See that, listen to this. Read it. 
This, this would have, this, this, it would, this, that contact would have been able to sharpen you, and and you would have been able to be uh, converted, dealing with the law. You will, you wouldn't feel cut, cause when you leave, you are gonna be like, damn, I'm straight finna go on the Sabbath day now, cause I heard it. Okay, wait. Where you at? First John chapter one verse seven. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You see that? I don't think he's paying attention. Listen to him one more time. First John 1 and 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. See, we have fellowship one with another. Go ahead. And the blood of Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And the blood of Christ cleanses us. The blood of Christ, the correction of the scriptures. Because when we preach in Christ's blood, we preach in Christ's death. But what did Christ do? He died leaving us an example that we should follow. So when we preach that one to another, that's going to cleanse us. That's going to convert us. Now I'll read Psalms again. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Converting the soul. You see that? So when we did, when we like when we deal with the laws with each other, it's gonna teach you to be converted, to change your mind. Instead of disobeying the Sabbath day, obey the Sabbath day. And the Lord will give that's right. And the Lord will give you the spirit to do it. You understand? You can go with a band of brothers. We gonna we gotta you gonna you can go to the show with us tomorrow. We're going to go both side will and see it again tomorrow and then keep the Feast of Tabernacles with us. And then put your, you put your wife in a situation to where she's dealing with other sisters just like you're dealing with a band of brothers that stand up with the law. Feeling refreshed, not get asked. That's the whole purpose. That's what this fellowship and unity of, uh, uh, is all about, man. This ain't about us just coming out here to do our own thing. We coming out. We actually come out here, man. Mean well, trying to help our people, not trying to hurt them, but trying to help them, trying to enlighten them, so that they can find favor in the one that they call God. Because if not, then they're gonna be enemies of God. Okay, read. This is Acts chapter three, verse nineteen. Repent ye therefore and be converted, uh -huh. that your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be what? Blotted out, scratched out. Right now, you finna get a talent, cause you know better. The scripture say, He that know it to do what? Do it. Lose his Lord's will and do it, and I shall be beaten, beat, beaten with many stripes. You see, and that sometimes that's why we have things that don't go our way, things don't go in our favor because we know what we should be doing. But the whole objective is for us to be what that our sins may be blotted out when what when the times of refresh when the times of refresh and now we feel refreshed. Okay. What we doing? Shall come from the presence of the Lord. So the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, man. Now you feel confident. You always feel good when you're doing the right thing. You see? So we got contact information on that, brother. Uh, you want to learn more? Reach out. Okay? All right, brother. Have you been studying with some people before? I, I have before. You have? What happened? I was in Dallas. I went to the Okay. How long you been here in St. Louis? Since June, you looking for some place to uh, learn more and stuff like that? Somebody get him a number, a direct number. All right, so we're going to continue on, though. Why this brother get you the number? What, what you holding up? Romans 5, that's right. Romans 5 and 10. What's your name, brother? Tyrone, okay, Tyrone. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. See that by the examples of his son. So we were when we were in sin. Okay, so God, so the most I didn't send Christ to die for nothing. We're gonna prove that to you. Can you get the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and hold that? Hebrews chapter 10. And maybe uh, start at 25. So if you continue in sin, if you continue in sin, then Christ, his death de availed you nothing. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. 
not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Right, because the assembling of yourselves does what? It cleanses you. The fellowship, the unity of the spirit, it cleanses you, it washes you, it makes you clean. You end up being correction, you end up being instruction, being instructed. But those that hated reproof, the most I said, they're gonna die. You can't hate reproof, man, you gotta love reproof. Okay, read. As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. So if you don't, if you're not converted, and if you sin willfully, after you have received the knowledge of the truth, what? There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. See that? So Christ, man, is not going to help you. It avail it to nothing. You're not going to be accepted in the sight of the Most High. Read. This is Romans chapter 5, verse 10. For if when ye were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall live by his life. So you were reconciled to God by his sacrifice, okay? But the sacrifice is not going to cleanse you if you repeat the same matter over and over and over again. You can't do that, okay? Read. And not only so, but we also joy in God. You see that? So now you should be happy in the Most High. You should be happy in this truth, especially if you use the law to repent and you use the law to convert, to change your mind, to make you clean. Read. Through our Lord Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. See that? So now you have been forgiven. Okay? But, but you can't say that you're forgiven if you continue in sin. Get, now get Romans, uh, what's that? Six. What shall we say then? Three. Romans chapter six, verse. Shall we continue? Yes, okay. I'm sorry. Romans chapter six, verse three. Verse one. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's right. Shall we continue in sin? Shall we keep sinning? Shall we just listen? Okay? Shall we listen and not repent that grace may abound? No. God says no. Read. God forbid. God says no. We're going to teach you about what grace is according to the scriptures. Those of you, sister, do you know what grace is? Do you know what grace is according to the scriptures? You ain't grace now, right? Okay, so we're going to show you according to the scriptures what grace is. Okay? Yeah. Titus chapter 2 and, yes, Titus chapter 2 verse 11, for the grace of God, for what, for the grace of everybody that's out here, in grace, we're going to teach you what grace is, for the grace of God, read, that bringeth salvation, it brings salvation, especially when you repent, and you convert it, and you change, read, hath appeared, hath what, appeared, it appeared in Christ, Teaching you something, read to all men. Come on, teaching us Come on. that denying ungodliness, denying ungodliness that's what grace is. So, how are we gonna continue in sin and lean on grace and expect grace to just keep on leaping over our sins, protecting us? It don't work like that. It teaches you to deny ungodliness, it gives you an opportunity. To do what? To keep God's laws. And right now the children of Israel are guilty of breaking all God's laws. You have done away with God's laws. You let Christianity teach you that. You let your oppressors teach you that God's laws is done away with. That's why you dress unclean, you walk unclean, you live unclean, you think unclean, you eat unclean. You do everything unclean, leaning on grace. But the Bible says the grace of God teaches you to deny ungodliness. Read and worldly lust and worldly lust so that means you're supposed to be fighting off those temptations you're not supposed to be giving in to lust saying god know your heart you know what god says about the heart god says the heart is deceitful your heart is tricking you it's full of spirits read we should live soberly you should live soberly okay spiritually sober not drunk like a maniac you know what a drunk does? A drunk is profane, man. Lewd. Public intoxication, public urination, public fornication. Okay? 
A drunk has no control. You say, you know what people say, a drunk ain't S-H-I-T. That's what people say about drunkenness. So you can't be spiritually drunk in this because if you spiritually drunk, you know what's gonna happen? You gonna break out, you gonna break all God's laws. So the scriptures say that you should be sober, man. Read righteously, righteously.